Hi guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be excellent. Oh, by the way, happy lockdown. We're back in 2020. I don't know why, but um, it's fine. It's fine. You know, people are not well. We have to stay at home and respect the guidelines. Um, I just um, wanted to say that you're going to enjoy this video today. I know it's so long. I'm sure it's already like 50 minute video, but I talked to you about my entire um, career path as to how I landed in this spot today. Taking you from my pageant world to runway to INTM, telling you my experience and just, you know, how I ended up here. So I think you're going to be encouraged today and you're going to find the motivation in this video to push through all your failures and uh, downsides. So without further ado, also I did this makeup look. Obviously you know that. It's super glam and we have nowhere to go but beauty always follows me. I have to do a makeup look for me to be able to talk to you and have such long conversations. <laughs> so yeah, without further ado, let's quickly jump into the video. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how I shave my face. Uh, it's been a while since I did that in a tutorial. So I'm gonna take my wheat trimmer. It's something I use um, all the time and every time because it's really easy to shave with this one. I'm just gonna switch this on and use this side of the trimmer. There's like tiny hair flying everywhere, but um, it's quite a peach fuzz. I always do like every two weeks. Whenever I see some hair growth, I use a trimmer. It's not like I have a schedule or a routine, uh, but it gives like a clear application of makeup. Your skin is much more smoother and it also sort of exfoliates the skin and removes all the dead skin, especially when you use the blade to shave. Um, all the dead skin sort of comes out, which is great and gives you like a nice revived face. Uh, this is from Tinkle. I It's called Tinkle. Um, tinkle blade yeah it's from Amazon you get it in Miniso Nike like everywhere I think you just type face blade and anyone is good be careful because it's really sharp so uh, I just wanted to do this side because now uh, we're in weekend lockdown today is Saturday and can't go anywhere babies and also I think the salons are shut for a while so we'll have to groom ourselves now girls like at home grooming has come back again so weird dude it's like 2020 all over again but this time we're like mm, we know the drill we got it <laughs> like i feel like we're so much more well versed and not in a panic state which is great i feel like we've been through the worst and now we just know how to handle ourselves uh and we're not shocked if there's a lockdown we're like you know what okay people are sick and it's time to contain yourselves and eventually this will go away like it did it did go away but there are so many people in the world and it's contagious. So it's one of those things where we have to take time. We have to take precautions and especially people who are trying so hard to make it and just got back on their feet to hear like a lockdown's happening again and think even the weekend lockdown is a lot because some people work two, three jobs to feed their family. So it's quite devastating for them. And yeah, but I guess now people know the drill. Like I said earlier, you know, there's much less panic that's happening they're like okay fine it's happening again at this point i've seen akhil's family and my family go through it so closely that i'm like kind of deathly afraid but also not i feel like if i get it i'll just have to go through it like everybody else you know but you can't stop living it's one of those things where you have to take double protection but you have to do what you gotta do if you have to get out of the house you have to get out if it's an emergency you know um so yeah i mean to each his own everybody knows what they have to do and what not so I'm not here to advise you, but I'm just like, take care. Okay, so I just gave myself a little bit of trim. I think now I'm good to go. You can also do your nose. I shave my nose hair. Okay, let's get on to the makeup. I'm super excited. Um, I love it when it's makeup time and conversation time. It's my favorite. Again, I'm gonna put all the makeup products on the screen so that I don't have to interrupt my story time. So let's go. So I was in Nationals in Mumbai. It's in Bandra. For all of you living in Bombay, know that college. It's very famous. It's on Linking Road. So I went there for five years. So my entire college life was in Bandra, 11, 12, and the rest of my degree. Um, I did BMM and that is uh, bachelor's in mass media. So I studied um, advertising 
and it was pretty good i feel like to be honest with you it was quite a useless course for me in general um because a lot of the students in bmm advertising went on to actually do internships in an ad agency and stuff whereas i never even used my degree you know i didn't so i feel like i could have done some other course you know instead of finishing my degree in college i could have done um a degree in styling or i don't know taken up a makeup course back in the day that degree never did anything for me in my personal life because i knew i wanted to be an actor okay it's something that i knew since i was a kid that's why i took part in like india's next top model etc thinking you know that can be a stepping stone to my stardom but um i guess god and life had other plans for me so i continued my college i think in my second year i started entering pageants and i really don't know how this happened i'll tell you why i had an inclination towards it firstly because i thought that was the only route um to enter the bollywood industry and secondly my mom was a pageant girl okay i'll put up some pictures if i find i definitely have pictures so i'll show you guys that my mom was a pageant girl all her life like initially in her 20s um she i don't know how she got the chance but my mom started working also at a very young age i feel like um she had to take up responsibilities really soon uh because of her parents i don't think my grandparents were working after a certain point so my mom had to step in and my mom did like lots of secretarial jobs i think and uh, later on she she was really tall my mom's tall she was tall she was beautiful she had great hair and every guy she tells me was like totally after her and you'll see why after seeing the pictures she was gorgeous okay and my mom's fashion sense was also really cool she always wore heels and she wore really cool outfits to her work and um so that's how i think she got an offer where they're like why don't you take part in you know uh, the pageant and see where it takes you so i think that's how she entered the pageant world and um, she got through and got through and finally she won miss may queen uh, there was a big portrait in all of our houses back in the day with the crown i don't know where that photo is i'm so heartbroken i think it must be somewhere um and i remember that very vividly in my head seeing that photograph of my mom on the wall for such a long time and she used to show me all her catalogs and things like that like she has done so much modeling she's a uh, model for tide for mercedes for all of these like print ads and catalogs back in the day in dubai was huge right So my mom was uh, born and brought up in Mangalore but then after her 10th or 11th grade I think she moved to Dubai it's a little bit hazy the story but I know eventually she lived half like most of her life in Dubai all of us right I was born in Dubai so um she moved there and she got a secretarial job i think and then after that she entered the pageant world the glamorous world just people just loved how she looked and cuz my mom is very shy and very like introverted and you know very um soft when she talks so i feel like how she must have got the confidence to go up on stage and just like speak her mind and you know back in the day So there were a few girls that were always chosen for you know runway shows and print and so she had a great group of girlfriends back in the day who used to uh, have so much fun together she used to tell me how she used to go to discos you know um she's like back in the day we used to go to a lot of dance pubs and discos and it was like so much fun when i think about it i'm just thinking of my mom going to clubs and dancing <laughs> i just can't get that image in my head she told me she had like a lot of fun with her girl gang anyway i'm telling my mom story but that is what i was inspired by you know i just looked at all of her catalogs growing up in her album she's kept it really safe and i was like shit man this looks like such a good life you know she's on billboards she's in magazines and it looked pretty glamorous and i had my eyes on the pageant i was like some day i want to be wearing that crown that my mom wore 
Hi guys. Okay, jumping in really quickly. This photograph has a very cute story behind it. Um so after they had won the competition, everyone had gone their separate ways. Um years later, the pageant called them back for a mini photo shoot and this was that photo shoot, okay? So what you don't realize is that my mom is 3 months pregnant here. She had gotten married by then. And guess who's in a tummy, baby? It's me. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm basically modeling with her in her womb. I guess uh, now we know where I get it from. I was modeling at a very young age, guys. I wasn't even born. But yeah, that was me and I thought there was such a cute story to share, so so cute. She looks so beautiful. Look at that tall hands and legs for days and she looks just gorgeous. So, I think that's how I was groomed to be a pageant girl. I feel like my mom and dad never told me, "Yeah, you've got to be a pageant girl and stuff." But by choice, I was like, "You know what? Can you help me? I want to go into the pageant." And luckily enough, like as I want to say, as fate would have it, like I got an offer, or I read it in the papers that for applications to Miss India apply, or something like that. Look, I don't remember how the application process started. This was years ago, but anyhow, I applied. I'd apply your city, just fill a form, a few pictures, and they would call you back if you were shortlisted. I think. Um so I applied multiple like directly to Miss India and stuff and I never got in. So I realized that you have to go through these state pageants first. I think um not state city pageants first. So they would have like a Miss Pune, Miss Chandigarh, Miss Ahmedabad and they would finally get all the city pageant winners together into the main competition. That's how it worked back then. So I realized I couldn't just jump to the main competition. I have to go to the city. Anyway, I went to Miss Pune. It was um Femina Miss Pune. I went there and I got selected. There was like a lot of a lot of screening processes to get to the top final, okay? First there's like a bunch of girls just like everywhere. All of them are just like waiting for their hopes and dreams to come true that they would be Miss Femina Pune and then Miss India and Miss Universe. Everybody had the same dream in that room. So I used to be so lost in a crowd of so many girls just wanting the same thing as me. And then I just focused. I kept my head in the game and I'm like and I'm quite competitive when it comes to people around me at least back in the day I was so competitive. I was like I have to be the best at what I do at every stage in life. I'm still like that today, but a little calmer. <laughs> but um yeah, I just have to, had to win. I knew I had to win. So, I went through the different stages and there was a lot of rejection. Let me tell you, it was not a easy cake walk. Um thing because I was young, I was still developing in my looks and my grooming. So, all of this didn't just come to me, right? I had to like go through a lot of training. So somehow I was very liked by the judges and the people who were responsible for choosing the finalists because I was um, I could talk really well and I was always prepared with my answers I would pre prepare and they had mentors and guides over there to help you answer some questions help you prepare for the pageant you know give you advice basically on how to sit and typical pageant girl and i used to absorb the advice really well and i used to listen really carefully and i think that's partly where my poise and stuff comes from because that's how i got trained <laughs> So anyhow I passed through that entire stage and I'll tell you how it is roughly as I can remember okay so you would have to go through multiple screening rounds where they would call like over 100 people 100 girls and they would screen them shortlist them shortlist them shortlist them you have to keep walking you know in your bikinis in your sh like little tiny denim shorts and a tank top that was like the attire for the pageant selection process Now that I think about it I feel like it was only about your body and how you looked and how you just like appeared on stage uh they would very rarely ask you some questions before the selection process they would be like yeah what is your dream this and that very like simple questions but it would mostly be about how you looked So back in the day I was all game for you know looking my best physically and I had no problems walking in front of the judges and can I tell you like the selection that was happening was mainly done by a man of course there were women also but i think the main decision maker was a man and like two three other men which at that point i i didn't know anything about feminism and like you know 
patriarchy. I was so young. I was like 18, 19 and I was so out of all of it. I just wanted to win and look pretty and stuff. So at that time, I did not know what that all meant. So I was like happily like parading myself in front of them like all the other girls. And I thought there was nothing wrong with that. But now when I think about it, I used to, I think about this a lot and I'm like, why did I do that? I felt like a um if there were men like judging your bodies like you know there were so many women who were skinny who were a little overweight medium lean and they would just had to walk in their bikinis like a th- dude we walked a thousand like I can't even t- put a finger on the number because they just made you change into your bikinis all the time and walk and parade in front, turn around back like you know just like your pageant walk and then go back and then they would make a selection process. And now that I'm just like, what the hell? How can, <laughs> that's crazy to me. And I got chosen for the Miss Femina Miss India Pune. Okay, when they called out my name at the end, like the shortlisted people and they're like, Malvika, Sitlani, and I'm like, oh my God. Like typical pageant, I was so stoked to be chosen as the top finalists because now I would compete with the 12 girls or 13 girls to become Miss Femina Miss Pune. And then I would go on to Miss India and Miss Universe. So I was stoked. I'm like, I can do this easily. Like 13 girls I can take down. I was very competitive. I'm like, let's do this. So I was very excited of being like chosen among so many women. And I thought, you know what? This is meant to be. Otherwise, why would I be here today? I'm getting selected. I'm sure I'm doing something right. So my parents were really happy for me. They didn't have any apprehensions of uh, sending me to the pageant. They were always around. They used to pick me up, ask me how it went. So it, they were around all the time to make sure I was okay. Once you get selected in the main, main pageant now to enter the competition, um, you get a training period of a few weeks wherein there would be uh, a pageant choreographer, a mentor, um, and just teaching you how to eat, how to sit, how to present yourself, how to answer a few questions. And you could ask them questions if you had, and they would mentor you through those weeks for the competition. I was completely excited. We would stay in a hotel and they would, every morning was a session. You wake up at 7 a.m., then have some breakfast and go for your training. So they would have a choreography of the pageant of how it would be in the first round, second round, third round. If you win, where you're supposed to stand. If you did not win, how to smile and clap. <laughs> okay, like that, like, okay, you were not supposed to show your like negative face or whatever. Basically, all of that. I was like, okay, this is good. Waking up every day, I was very stoked because I get to learn something new and I get to, you know, be the best at it. And I was at it. So we had an amazing choreographer, Alicia Rawat. Okay, she sort of actually primed and prepped us into being the best version of ourselves. She used to give us advice as well as you know, general advice. She used to choreograph every pageant and she was really good at her job. And I looked up to her immensely. I was like, I want to be like Alicia if I ever have to be a model because she, for me, was like the epitome of Indian models. I felt like she had the grace, the poise, she was a mom and she did everything in that I wanted in a woman like she's soft-spoken she's beautiful she had grace and so I used to follow her very closely and just pay attention when she was teaching me and man reminiscing all of that and yeah she was my like mentor in every way over there okay I used to just focus on her and I picked up all the modeling tips that she told us about all of us were you know hell-bent on getting the right formation the right steps it's literally a choreography huh it's not like just cello it's like your pivot of the leg, your hand, your shoulders, right or left. All of that mattered in the pageant game. So you had to keep your head very focused. So yeah, competition day arrives, okay? And we're all ready. We're all pumped. We're trained. We know our choreography. We know our answers. So what they do is they give you a sheet of questions that the, the judges will ask. So there's always potential questions the judges could ask. That's how it works. So you think like the questions are randomly picked by judges. That's not true. They're given a set of like 30, 40 questions and we have to pre-prepare our answers or know roughly what we have to say in case. Now the judges could twist the question and ask you their own question if they feel like, but mostly they stuck to those questions as well, okay? So we knew, I knew all those answers roughly in my head and I prepared like, you know, if this was asked, I would say this and I was good to go. And our introductions also had to be very proper. Like now, if you ask me to introduce myself, I'll be like, hey, I'm Malvika and I absolutely love life. I'm, I, you know, I'm a dreamer, I'm an achiever. I, I can say it on the spot. 
देयर इन माई हेड एम लाइक मुझे ये रट्टा करना पड़ेगा यू नो आई वॉज सो लाइक प्रॉपर विद द रूल्स आई एम लाइक आई नीड टू से लाइन बाई लाइन कॉमा एंड फुल स्टॉप एवरी थिंग इन माई हेड आई वॉज सो यंग राइट आई टुक इट वेरी सीरियसली इन द वे दैट इफ आई मिस अ लाइन आई वॉन्ट गेट सिलेक्टेड लाइक यू नो आई नीड टू से एवरी सिंगल लाइन ऑन दिस पेपर अदरवाइज आई विल लूज द कॉम्पिटिशन सो देर वॉज सो मच प्रेशर दैट आई वॉज गिविंग माई ओन सेल्फ दैट वेन इट केम टू द पैज एंड डे एवरीबडी हैड टू इंट्रोड्यूस दम सेल्व वन बाय वन so they would go contest in number 1 please introduce yourself you know to get to so the judges get to know you so like hey guys i'm so and so this is my favorite hobby this is da 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 okay when it came to me i was all like okay let's do this hi my name is mavika sitlani i am blank i drew a blank and the host really knew me well and he was he was banking on me winning this competition and i looked at him and he's like it's okay mavika like take another chance start again he was trying to encourage me you know and i'm just like i drew a blank i could not remember my lines and i didn't know what it was to make a spontaneous introduction like today i would do that but back in the day i'm like nahi nahi line ke hisab se jana hai nahi to you lose the competition i completely forgot what the next line is and it was here talking about myself how can i forget what line it is i came under pressure there were people there was silence i knew my parents were sitting i was like fudge i lost this competition like in my head i gave up already i'm like i'm not going to win this i'm not going to win this and i drew a blank i'm like i caught the next two three lines of the end and i'm just like thank you and i gave up i knew i was not going to win this competition because i messed up i messed up bad you cannot mess up in your introduction because that is the main first impression if you're not confident in your first introduction how will you win the competition right it's fair enough okay so all of that happened we didn't have time to like cry behind stage and all we had to get on to the next level right and i was hoping i was able i could recover in my next levels and just like show them how confident i am and i forgot and i'm sorry and i just wanted them to see me the upcoming round was a series of titles you can win before your main title so remember those two weeks of mentorship that we got from our choreographers and stuff so in those two weeks they had mini competitions going on where they would choose best hair best body miss congeniality means the most popular girl then there was a couple of things miss um delight and miss timeless beauty timeless beauty means like effortlessly beautiful uh, she's been beautiful since her kid to now that's timeless beauty they would call us in and they would check our hair like each individual person they would ask us how often do you like uh, have a hair shower and how thick is your hair and they would touch your hair and they would be like mm this is the quality of your hair how often have you colored your hair so that they would narrow down to miss best hair so we had a lot of subtitles that you can win in case you don't win the main competition so you're not completely a loser back in the day you would win something or the other and go home with one title coming back to the pageant the next round was these title winners okay i'll put a clip of the pageant if i find online so you guys can see how it actually took place and the goel ganga group femina miss pure delight goes to malvika setlani The Pune Marriott Feminine Miss Congeniality goes to Malvika Setlani. The Enhanced Feminine Miss Body Beautiful is Malvika Setlani. The sub contest is PC Jewelers Feminine Miss Timeless Beauty. And I'm sure you know it by now. It's none other than Malvika Setlani. I just won my fourth title, PC Jewelers, Femina Miss Timeless Beauty. I won four subtitles amongst twelve girls. Um, I took all four titles. I had like sashes, like four sashes across me, and people were like shocked. They're like, "How is she winning everything?" So my titles that I won were Miss Congeniality, that is the most popular girl in the. pageant selection best body beautiful that means i had the best body amongst everyone i won miss femina delight i think which was um the most delightful girl or something like that and then number 4 i won miss timeless beauty that was a very very like i love that title because it's like you've been very cute and pretty your entire life and you're timeless and you'll age very well as well 
um yeah the winners were about to be selected and they're like okay the top three winners of this competition and i was hopeful because i won four subtitles i'm like they would see how good i am and i messed up and i'm sorry but unfortunately i wasn't the winner and i was so sad i was so sad i'm like shit my life is over literally i was like my life is over I am not going to be able to enter Miss India ever again or I would have to do this next year once again. So I was like so devastated when I tell you in that moment you don't know what life has for you in the future. You know when that one moment happens where you think this is where you're supposed to go and this is your path, you don't know in that moment that God has other plans for you. Life is going to be so amazing after that. but in that moment i know how devastating it is i was so heartbroken i was crying like mad i went out and i was sobbing i was sobbing i didn't want to show anyone i was just upset inside and i'm like let's put on a brave face and let's go out come on we got this okay and then my mentor came to my parents and he's like uh, man she was a contender she would have won this competition if she didn't mess up in the introduction and i felt so bad i'm like oh my god i lost i lost it it's over for me um anyway i got i went back home with my parents uh came back to bombay and everybody else moved on it was all good we had a lot of um coverage in the paper by the way this puna you know pageant had a lot of coverage we had a full bombay times i have all the cuttings bombay times feminine miss india finalist and all of that so i was very like known in college as well but the fact that i lost the competition to me in my heart was devastating i couldn't get over it for a long time like i was moving on in front of people i was putting on a brave face and i was like yeah it's okay at least i won four subtitles like the highest ever and my morale had come really down like my self esteem was destroyed i'm like that's crazy you know <laughs> even after winning four subtitles i could not see the victory i could only see what i didn't win and that was my problem back in the day as a child you don't see the good things you see just the winning game i moved on with life i moved on with my college life and i made sure i finished my degree of course Okay so during all of this I used to see I saw the winners and everything come in the paper I used to not even read the paper but back in the day Bombay Times was a thing right Miss Ahmedabad Miss Pune of course and lot of city winners and every time I used to see Bombay Times sitting in my hall I did not have the guts to open the paper because if I saw other winners I would break down like i would just i would be like that could have been me i don't want to read any winners i want to i completely blocked the pageant world out of my head and i'm like i'm just going to move on in life forget it that was not my fate right that was not my destiny so i moved on to my last and final year in college i tried a lot to enter the runway you know in some way or the other but i did get a few shows because of um, femina miss pune uh, for designer wear so i used to walk those shows and it was good i loved it but i didn't get proper work then i came across another pageant this was not femina miss india it was um it was uh, i forgot what it's called but it was called style diva miss style diva okay and i was like what is this <laughs> because it's not the same team right so i'm like this is a fresh team they don't know me i want to enter this competition i want to do it i just regained my strength again and i was like this is my second chance this is my competition and i want to win this pageant at least so i was trying to build my hope up and self esteem be like mans you can do it once again you know the process let's do it and this was uh, done by miss achla sachdev i'm sure you guys know who she is she's a very renowned choreographer I realized the whole panel of judges were women and the mentoring team was also a woman which I was like hell yeah baby I don't want no man staring at my body and being like this is not right this is not right I was like I'm going to go into an all woman panel and I'm going to try and win this competition because there's so much more empowerment there uh, Miss Sachla was like you do it you've got it let's do this I think you can win this competition she was very encouraging during the whole um pageant you know I'm going to take this pink I'm going to do some bold colors today. And Style Diva is all about your personality. Okay, it's not about how well you answer nothing. It's about how you present your best self in the competition. Who you are as a person, they want to see who you are. your style because it was style diva so how you style yourself um what like clothes you put on there were competitions like okay style this in the next 10 minutes style yourself in the next 10 minutes so you had to pick up a lot of things and style yourself 
so it was that and i felt like that that was so much more healthier right um and presenting your best self i mean wow what an amazing title so i was like let's get into this competition so i did i applied for the competition of style diva and i got in but again this was in pune i think yeah i think everything started in pune so i went to pune again and i uh got into training so again there's a two week mentorship training that you uh learn the choreography of the pageant you sit with a the mentor they train you how to talk but this was different this time it was different because there were women a and secondly there was not a lot of judgment so there was no like um ugly competition between the girls the girls were friendly i met a few really amazing girls in the competition and i became really close to them over time so the one thing i loved about that is that they would train you so well every time they would work on your weakness which i loved so what they would do is they would train you into answering the questions right so they would do like these early morning sessions where you would walk in a mock a uh, pageant and you would answer some questions that miss achla would ask you she'd be like okay if the judge asks you this how would you answer the question introduce yourself and she knew that i forgot my introduction like she knew my whole story because i told her i was deathly afraid of a large audience and i think i have a fear of stages i have stage fright and when i see large group of people i forget what i have to say so she was trying to work on me and train me into being fearless on stage and she's like you got this you're confident look at you let's do this all positive reinforcements whenever i caught the mic i would get a flashback of femina miss india and i would completely start shivering like you know because that was a tra- traumatic moment for me because that was a life changing moment for me and that never happened so that kept playing in my head every time and it was stopping me from winning this competition as well and i'm like i cannot help me help me i want to i want to move on from that competition so she kept making me say my introduction so many times they kept training me to be confident and fearless and they're like you got this come on i'm not going to take you uh, i can't have this scared and fear girl here i want the strong side to come out you know and i knew that i could not let her down i could not disappoint her so i was like okay I'm going to try and then I kept saying my introduction so many times that it sort of got registered in my head really well and she told me and they told me that don't be worried if you forget any line just continue say whatever you can say it's yourself talk about you so that made me a little fearless and I was like okay it's it's not that bad it's not that bad and I've grown up from that experience I've learned what I don't have to do just practice and keep your head in the game so that really helped i think the training process put me in a better position to enter the competition and just kill it whenever i'm nervous i stutter it's just a thing that i've had uh, all three of us have it like my brothers and me as well when there's something we don't know about and when we're put in a very nervous situation i start to stutter and that's what happened i think back in the day and i didn't want to speak it was like like a lock but um So Miss Achla was working on that. She's like don't start or take a deep breath and then speak. Stop and speak slowly, you know? So we worked on that. Competition ka din aata hai, okay? And it's called Miss Style Diva, okay? And I was like, okay, cool. Let's do this. Let's sort of uh get in the game. It's time to win this competition. And I was feeling really good. I remember feeling very good on the pageant day. I'm like I got this. I'm going to do this. So we did a couple of rounds and in my introduction I killed it. I killed it. I'm like, "Hi guys, I'm Madhika Sitlani and this is who I am." Da da da. I was so confident because I had lesser pressure. I was like, "It's okay. I I convinced myself before the competition, "Hey, if I don't win, it's okay. Move on in life." I started I started giving that pep talk very very early on so that I'm not disappointed at the end. After my introduction, I nothing in the world could stop me because I killed it in my introduction and now I'm like, "Now this competition is mine because I'm going to win this. Nobody can take this from me." And I killed it. I walked with so much confidence in the next few rounds and I, Okay, I remember my winning question as well. So, when it came to the question answer round because they ask you random questions, right? I don't know which question they would pick from the form and all. So, uh my winning question was I think. So they're like, "Okay, good evening, Malika. My question to you is if you had to raid a celebrity's closet, okay, so that you would get all her clothes, which celebrity would that be?" And I'm like, uh 
of course miss sonam kapoor i think i said that i was like of course i would raid miss sonam kapoor's closet i mean she has the most amazing sense of style and i would definitely like to wear every single outfit she owns and i i'm pro- something like that. i'm pretty sure i would kill it or something girl I, i was on an adrenaline rush okay i was just like kuch bhi puch raha bhi no one can stop me <laughs> So yeah, I said Miss Sonam Kapoor and I I answered in a very confident manner and I think um I didn't stutter or stop or think simple two line answer and I'm like thank you very much and I walked away. And I'm like hey listen, I did my best. Now whatever happens is not in my hands, okay? So the thing is that when you try to do your best, my girls in whatever area you are put to put in, after that if you don't get the outcome you expected it's still fine because you could not have done better than that you know it's like so whatever you do give your 100% even if you lose after that you'd be satisfied because you're like wo mere kismat mein tha hi nahi wo mera tha hi nahi all right so when it came to the winner selection i was like all right it's time even if i win the runner up i'll be happy okay i was in that mental state i'm like let's do this okay so they announced the second runner up it was in me and i'm like shit now there's only two more spots remaining first runner up and winner first runner up not me again i'm like i've lost oh my god i've lost again in my head i'm like oh shit 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 my heart was thumping out of my chest i'm like oh my god so i had one other girl that performed really well i'm like oh shit it's her it's her and the winner of the style diva is Malvika Sitlani <laughs> and I'm like I said what girl I-, I won you're telling me I won and I was so I was like yes Jesus I strutted and I freaking took that it wasn't a crown but it was like an amazing like um trophy and a sash and i was like hell yeah i want to do it and i called my mom i don't think she came in that competition because of some reason i was like i won and she was so freaking happy for me she's like oh my god i'm so happy that you did this and you won and and i was so ecstatic because that is the first pageant i ever won and of course it was not a femina miss india it is not going to take me to miss universe but the whole idea was for me to overcome my weaknesses which was stage fright which was the um, the problem of stuttering when i'm nervous confidence i had to beat those enemies one by one and that's the i think the whole point of why i had to challenge myself to get into another pageant i did not let that trauma put me down i did not let that one incident in my life define the rest of my life i was like no just because i lost once doesn't mean i have to lose consistently i will get back in the game i will take the winning crown and i will go home and after that i will be good the whole idea was to battle my demons and beat them down so that they don't trouble me in my entire life i have all of you i'm not afraid of the stage i love the camera i love people i can do on the spot speeches that whole traumatic experience just fizzled away it was these blocks in my head but one by one i worked to drop them down for my life so they never never interfere in the rest of my life and once i won that pageant i was so confident of who i was and knowing that hey i could take down anything i put my mind to and it made me a confident girl after that i was unstoppable i was getting like into my last year of college and then that was it so i really had to decide what my career path was going to be because now i had to earn some money you're lost in the crowd in this industry you're just like where do i stand because everybody is standing looking then i got into this mtv reality show called india's next top model i didn't find a lot of honesty in the show and i was feeling a little a lot of toxicity around me and just like bitching and gossiping and it's just not who i was mm-hmm.